We took on Reading Half Marathon last weekend and I've got the medal to prove it. And to say the race maybe didn't go fully according to plan would be a bit of an understatement. And my legs have been completely trashed ever since because it has been a long time since I've taken on a road half marathon. Now we took the cameras along, made a full race day video, so I've left a link in the description below to that video. If you wanna check it out, it's definitely worth a look if you wanna see me gritting my teeth and suffering. So today has been the first sort of day where I feel like my legs could handle a run. So in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at a popular trail running shoe from the Salomon brand that's just had an update, and that is their Ultra Glide 2. Now it's taken us a bit of time to get hold of a pair of these at the channel. Finally we have and holding up the original shoe and the updated shoe together I can't really see a lot of difference which to me isn't a bad thing because I really enjoyed running in these shoes. So let's dive into the video and take these bad boys out for their first run. How's everyone doing out there? Hope you're all fit and well, and thanks for joining us for another video. I'm Lloyd Purvis, and this is Run For Adventure. So it is first run, first impressions time at the channel, and at the start of the year, we had a bit of a flurry of these videos, but we haven't done one for a while because I've kind of been focusing my attentions on sort of structured road training to get ready for Reading Half Marathon, and if I'm honest, I've been having a few sort of lower leg issues along the way. Everything seems to be fine now, which is definitely a good thing because we've got new shoes stacking up in the corner that need to be tested. So back to the Salomon Ultra Glide 2 and it is a very subtle update this time round and as far as I can see the midsole and the outsole setup are pretty much identical to the original shoe. Although Salomon do claim that the energy foam compound has been slightly tweaked to make it a little bit more comfortable this time round. But the bulk of the updates are going to come when we take a closer look at that new upper. Uh, also, there has been a change to the RRP, so you'll now have to splash out £140 if you want a pair of the Ultra Glides compared to the £130 price point of the original shoe. So a pretty big price increase of £10 this time round, and I'm never a fan of that, but I suppose it's the way the world works. Other things that haven't changed when it comes to the new Ultra Glide 2 is heel offset is still 6mm, so you get a stack height on your heel of 32mm and 26mm under your forefoot. We've still got that same all-terrain contagrip outsole design, giving you that 3.5mm lug. So uh, golf are in a good level of performance when it comes to grip and traction on most surfaces. I did find in the previous version that that lug depth did struggle in the mud now and again, just not giving you that level of traction because of the depth. So maybe it would have been good to see a slightly deeper lug, maybe four mil, maybe four and a half mil. I think that would have really helped when it came to running in muddy conditions. Weight wise, they come in at 310 grams in a UK 10. So a very similar weight to the original version. Obviously we get Salomon's uh, quick lace cord system. And unfortunately we also get that poorly placed pocket in the tongue. So when we tested the original Archer Glides, once I'd locked those laces down, I found it really fit to stow that lace away because they're kind of blocking off the pocket. I was really hoping that Salomon would change the placement or the design to make it a bit easier, but unfortunately that's not the case. When it comes to the new upper construction, Salomon have utilized a lighter, more breathable engineered mesh this time round. Now, I did speak to a few viewers about the original shoe and they found that the upper could run quite hot at times. Now, I never had an issue with overheating or hot feet or anything like that, but hopefully the changes will make this a more breathable upper. We've got some nice structural overlays working from the heel down along that midfoot, wrapping around the laces and the toe box. We've also got a good level of padding around the ankle collar and in the gusseted tongue and then finishing off that upper you get a good level of protection from a nice substantial toe bumper. Having tried them on indoors they do feel very comfortable but I have to say they almost feel identical to the original shoe so I suppose it's time to lace them up get them on our feet get out on the trails and find out if they feel and perform any different while we're running in them so we'll see you guys out there. Okay, 
so we're just about two miles into the run so 1.93 to be precise i came the roadway to the towns because i just wanted to keep it relatively flat to shake the legs out so uh what have we learned from those two miles well the first thing is the new ultra glide 2 is comfortable on the hard stuff comfortable on the tarmac although i do think that midsole compound is maybe a little bit firmer than the original shoe but that might be just because it's a new shoe and it needs a bit of bedding in the second thing is i am completely overdressed i mean it's pretty tropical out here there's a little bit of a breeze but that sun is warm i can really feel the heat on my face and i definitely didn't need a long sleeve tee and a gilet to run in and last but not least i've said it already road running is brutal you know it's friday now so it's five days after reading half and yes the race didn't go according to plan but my legs are still super tight hip flexors hamstrings are like guitar strings so i definitely need this run i definitely need to shake everything out and i know it's going to help but it's going to be very steady i mean we came up here about 8 30 minute miling and even that felt like a bit of an effort so we've ticked off what just under four miles now runs going well happy to say the legs have started to loosen off maybe not as loose as i'd want them to be after four miles but they're definitely getting better so let's talk about the fit of the shoe and if you follow the channel then you'll know that my foot shape tends to work really well with salomon shoes in fact i don't think i've ever had a pair of salomon shoes that doesn't fit my foot shape well same with the ultra glide twos really good lockdown around my midfoot really well held in the heel the only thing that has changed from the original versions is i've gone up half a size to a uk 10 this time round. i was in a uk 9.5 which was fine in the original ultra glides but i did run the serpent trail 50k in it and i think for distance i just needed a little bit more length and a little bit more volume in that toe box and the uk 10 definitely fits better i've got a nice bit of wiggle room in the toe and i'm not too close to the end of the shoe but yeah the shoe's running well we're going to try and get in what a good seven miles today like i say it's definitely working it's shaking all that build up out of my legs but i think another three miles will work wonders and we should feel good by the end of the run let's crack on in this glorious sunshine the legs are definitely freeing up they feel pretty good now fine going uphill but oh when i go downhill wow them quads are still pretty painful they took a trash in in reading half marathon Okay, so that is a wrap on my first run in the new Ultra Glide 2s and my first run back since Reading Half Marathon. Happy to say I've survived. The legs have definitely loosened up, but the hamstrings and quads are still quite painful. And it was super steady. I was probably averaging nine minute miling, which was perfect for that first run back, shake the legs out. I'm gonna get home, do some stretching, do some rolling, do some body maintenance on the legs just to make sure everything's nice and loose after today's run. And then we'll give you guys a quick conclusion on how the new Ultra Glide 2s performed on its first run. Right, so we ended up doing 7.2 miles in the end, and I've just been going over some of the GoPro footage there, and you can definitely tell that my legs were pretty tight out there on the run. I got home, done loads of stretching, I've jumped on the rollers, but my quads are still pretty solid. Luckily for me, a top tip, I always book in a sports massage before I take on any event so that I don't miss out afterwards. And 
I'm going to see my brilliant therapist Kate on Tuesday just to iron things out, flush everything out of the system. I'm sure it's not going to be the most enjoyable massage in the world, but it's definitely going to help. As far as the updated Ultra Glide goes, and I do use the word updated very loosely because it pretty much feels like the identical shoe when I compare it to that original version. So like I mentioned on the run, a great fitting shoe on my foot shape, great lockdown around the midfoot, no movement in the upper, no slippage in the heel just the right amount of padding in that gusseted tongue and around that ankle collar for me. So it is a comfortable place to put your feet. Salomon claim that they've tweaked that midsole compound this time around and I'd have to agree, but I'm not sure they've made it any more comfortable. If anything, it feels a bit firmer to me. Now I know it's the first run for the new Ultra Glides, but if I remember all those years ago, back in that original Ultra Glide when I took it out on the Towns for the first time, I'm sure that midsole foam felt a bit softer, a bit more cushioned, a bit bouncier, and it definitely felt like it was returning more energy. I did get some feedback from viewers about that original version midsole that it did sort of compress down and flatten off after not a a lot of mileage sort of 150 to 200 miles which isn't great for a trail running shoe especially one that's designed to run distance uh, i didn't have that issue with my pair they seem to still have a fair bit of cushioning in that midsole so maybe salomon have sort of tweaked and played around with the blend of energy foam this time round to try and get a longer lasting more durable midsole setup now, don't get me wrong, it wasn't uncomfortable to run in, but I just didn't feel it gave me the sort of pop of the original shoe. I also feel that the Exodus Ultra 2 and the Mafati Speed 4s definitely gave me a, a sort of bouncier, softer ride. And I felt like I was getting a lot more sort of energy return from those two dual compound midsoles. We ran through a couple of stony sections on today's run and that Profil film worked well in that midsole setup. It gave me good underfoot protection and you can probably see from that footage when we we're out on the towers, it was pretty dry. So no wet rocks, no puddles and definitely no mud to contend with. So didn't have any issues when it came to grip and traction from the outsole. Obviously with this being pretty much the identical setup on the outsole as the original shoe, uh, I actually thought that performed pretty good on most types of terrain. Obviously with only a 3.5 mil lug depth, it is gonna struggle in muddy, boggy conditions when it comes to traction. And just looking at the outsole, one run in and I'm already seeing a little bit of wear on the lugs on the outside of the heel. Obviously, this is just our first outing in the new Ultra Glides. I'm going to continue to run in them and then I'll report back to you guys when we got some good miles in. I'm hoping that that midsole will bed in, it will soften up a bit, become a bit more responsive because I really enjoyed the feel of the cushioning in that previous version. And we've also got to take into consideration that my legs were pretty stiff out there today and maybe it's me who needs to soften up and bed in a bit. So there you have it, folks. The kind of new Ultra Glide 2s from Salomon. Uh, we've actually got another first impressions heading your way featuring an updated Salomon trail running shoe because we've also managed to get our hands on the brand new Sense Ride 5. Happy to say that this version of this popular trail shoe has gone through some big updates this time around. So we'll have lots of new stuff to talk about. So keep your eyes peeled. First impressions coming to the channel soon. It was also really good to be out there today and to feel the warmth of that sun on my face. And I've just realized that it's the first time wearing a t-shirt while doing a review for a while and these t-shirts are actually available at runforadventure.uk if you want to get your hands on one and it was great to get out after Reading Half Marathon and shake the legs out and not have any problems. If I'm honest I was a little bit worried about today's run because you know my legs were feeling very tight after hitting the road hard in the half marathon and also having those lower leg niggles before the race I didn't know how it was going to react. Glad to say got through it in one piece so uh, hopefully that means it's onwards and upwards for the rest of the year. But for now guys thanks for watching thanks for supporting the channel it's really appreciated. Don't forget you can follow what we're up to on our other social media platforms whether it be Instagram, Facebook or Strava. I also want to say a massive thanks to all the viewers out there that got involved in the poll we ran when it comes to the new Run for Adventure cap designs. Uh, your feedback was super, super helpful. So keep your eyes peeled. There should be some more news coming to the channel soon about them exciting cap designs. But that's a wrap on today's video. And as always, stay safe and keep on running. We ran through some stony sections out there on today's run and that profile film, profile film for the film. But the main uh, bulk of the updates come when we look at the up... Uh...
That Profil film in the midsole setup worked well, gave me good protection underfoot. Uh, also, I haven't got a clue what I'm gonna say next. <laughs>